Here is some bonus material about ensemble rate. So we've treated statistics of single neurons. Now we can start to think about a population of neurons. Let's consider a population of leaky integrated and fire neurons. We're all receiving the same input. And this input can be time dependent. We will consider that the different neurons will receive different background noise. This noise is there to take into account the fact that there's a different background of synapses that these neurons would typically receive. And what we want is to be able to estimate a feature that corresponds to change in the input uh, from the output of the cells. And since we want to be able to capture time-dependent information, we want something that is resolving time. So we want some type of firing rate that is time dependent. And what we can do is to try to measure the average number of spikes that are in say a time bin or a certain time window. So this approach is called the ensemble rate or the peristimulus time histogram. The equation looks like this. And what this is, is we take a smoothing function which is just there to take into account the fact that it doesn't matter so much whether a spike is one or two milliseconds away from its time. So we allow for possible jitter. Um, and so for every spike from every neuron, we will um, sum this smoothing function. And then we'll divide by the number of neuron and the size of that smoothing function to get a rate in Hertz because it's over uh, this time window. So this looks like this. We can look at, for instance, a raster plot, with it, which is a very common way to represent the output of a population of neurons. So here, every line is the response of one neuron. It can be a different neuron or it can be um, a different repetition that is a different instantiation of the noise from the same neuron. Um, and in time, we see that there's less spikes at a certain time and more spikes at a certain time, maybe due to some step changes in its input. So from this raster plot, the idea of the ensemble rate or PSTH for peristimulus time histogram is to take this average across column of all the spikes um, combined through the smoothing function here that I called epsilon. And if you do this, you will get something like this, where the ensemble rate is low, and then at this time here, bam, we suddenly have an increase in uh, the ensemble rate. So the ensemble rate will be representing the relative number of spikes per time bit. Mathematically, you should know that this is not the firing rate of individual neurons. What I mean by this is if you were to take to calculate the average number of spike in every row, it is not the rate that is here, nor the rate that is here. It's somewhere in, the, in between. So let me stress this fact a little further. Consider a population of neurons receiving a sudden input change. And we will first consider weak current flowing through uh, to stimulate those neurons. Now I show here the ensemble rate in blue as a function of time. And the black line corresponds to the average interspike interval. That is, if I, in every neuron, I calculate the average interspike interval and take one over this, I get a firing frequency, which matches the ensemble rate. This is true when the input is weak, but when the input is growing stronger, at the beginning of the response, just following the transient, the input transient, what we see is that the ensemble rate is shooting up. This is due to the fact that many neurons fire their first spike roughly all at the same time, particularly when the input is strong. But after that, their average rate is, is the same and they gradually desynchronize such that we lose this um, this locking to the input step. So after some time, you reach the average of the interspike interval. We can show the input-output function of both the early and the late component as a function of the input amplitude. 
and you see that the two diverge for strong input and that the early can be the ensemble rate can be uh, much higher than the inverse of the interspike interval it can also go lower in some conditions so all this goes to say that the ensemble rate is generally not equal to the inverse of the average interspike interval so these are two fairly independent features of the output of those neurons. 